We're going to do something a little different today because I need to talk to everybody about something that's really quite urgent. Um, as you can see behind me here, you can see that I, that I enjoy radio control model aviation. The reason for this video is the FAA is looking to regulate out of existence this beautiful hobby where, where this will all be illegal. That we, I will no longer be able to fly model, model airplanes. Now model aviation has been going on in my life for about 50 years. And as a young boy, I would go out and I would mow lawns, I had a paper route, I'd pull weeds. I would do whatever chores necessary around the neighborhood to get a little bit of spending money. And when I got a little bit of spending money, I would go to the local five and dime. And the local five and dime had a little hobby section and you could buy model airplanes. And now model airplanes back then aren't what you think of today. Model airplanes, this, this is actually a very old model airplane that I've kept for many, many years. And I want to show it to you so you get kind of an idea of what, what I'm talking about here. This is, in case you're curious, uh, I don't know if you can see that. This is a J3 Cub, which is uh, just a, a wonderful historic uh, airplane. And this, this is a model kit uh, from Sterling uh, that you can build this and turn it into a J3 Cub and then fly it with a radio control. But as you can see in the, in the kit here, the, um, the instructions are incredibly complex. And for a 12-year-old boy who's severely dyslexic, the people believe that he would never learn to read. This is kind of saved my. This helped save my life. Not only my grandmother is, was a retired school teacher who helped teach me to read, but to be able to read and comprehend as a 12-year-old child really complex uh, blueprints, and to be able to understand and then to create these model air, aircraft was amazing. The skills required to build something like this is extremely high. And um, model aviation gave me the opportunity to not only um, learn to read, but it gave me the opportunity to um, be able to, to develop the skills to be able to critical thinking, problem solving, um, aerodynamics, uh, a great deal of mathematics. And so when I would be in school, um, and, and I didn't understand algebra, geometry, or, or trigonometry, or whatever the, the subject was in, in school, uh, what helped me a great deal is to relate it back to model aviation, to give it a real world practical use. And, and that's how I learned and developed really good math skills, was because of model aviation. And this is, this is what we would consider a small glider even though so for some people they might say this looks really, really big, but the truth of the matter is it is really quite, quite a small one compared to something like the sail air. Because these are so silent, I've actually had um, hawks and eagles come and fly with my gliders because they say, well, that's an interesting looking bird. Let's go take a look at it. We have the ability <clears throat> to control this glider and fly it around the sky uh, looking for columns of warm rising air. Now, again, very traditional, even though this, this is a, a relatively new model, you can still buy these and build these yourself. Um, but if the FAA has its way, this will be illegal. Can anybody imagine this illegal? Why? Why? My, my wife says, why would it be illegal? Because the FAA is looking to control drones and they've lumped all of this into the same category as drones and traditional model aviation is very different than drones. Okay, now this one's state-of-the-art. This is, this is all, uh, this is a very small glider. This is a one and a half meters and this glider is so much fun because you don't have the tow hook you don't need a winch, you don't need a high start. There's, you can see there's no motor. 
and all you do is walk out to the middle of an open field, you know, the size of a football field or, or whatever, and I've got a little little finger tabs right there that you hold on to, and I throw this. And I can throw this up about 150 feet in the air, and then using the controller, basically steer this glider around the sky just like the other two. Again, dead quiet, no motors, no cameras. Um, it, it is one of the most beautiful hobbies in the world. In fact, what I'd like to tell everybody, um, most of us, when we were ch small children, we made paper airplanes. And you'd fold up a piece of paper into a paper airplane and you would go outside and you'd throw that paper airplane and your fantasy was that you'd throw the paper airplane and it would soar. And it would fly all over the sky. Well, this is that dream come true. This is very small, very light, um, that I can throw without any assistance from any other device and fly it all over the sky and, and have it soar. And, and so, you know, I, I just got into this uh, what, about three, four years ago. I got into these because of the convenience. Again, if the FAA has its way, this will be illegal. It, and and I will not be allowed to fly these anymore. This is a drone. Okay, you have four motors. Now the nice thing about these drones is you don't need to be a good pilot to fly these. You need to, to, to fly these like super well in competition, you have to be a good pilot. But to fly these for the average person, I mean th this thing, if you can look right here, you see that little button? If I, if I lose sight of my drone, I push that button and the drone flies back and lands all by itself, right where it took off. The drone, if it runs out of batteries, re it, it will return to where it took off. So you don't need to be a really great pilot to fly these. And so these, these are much, much easier for the average person. You don't need the skills to, to fly this that you do with traditional radio control model aviation. But therein lies the issue. Anyone can fly these. Now, again, if the FAA has its way, this is going to be illegal. The, this, to be honest, as you can see how tiny this is, this is too big. If the FAA has their way, this is too big to be able to fly uh, without the FAA regulations, which basically means that I will not be allowed to fly this uh, other than a designated flight park designated by the FAA and nowhere else. Now, here's the problem with the drones. And this is the problem, the reason the FAA is doing what they do. We have drones from very tiny like this up to very, very large drones. They all have cameras, they all have electric motors. You don't need a, a, a large skill set to fly them. So people have taken these um, without proper training and they have flown them in really bad situations. They have used these to harass wildlife. Um, a week or so ago, I, I got phone calls from individuals about a drone just like this one that was harassing a bald eagle's nest in Southern California. Uh, they chase wildlife with them. They will fly these over traffic accidents. They will fly these um, in, over natural disasters like forest fires. They will fly these all sorts of places to get, because it's got a camera, to get the video and then post the video on YouTube. Well, because of very, very poor practices by model drone operators like this one, um, the FAA has, is in the process of adopting regulations uh, uh, for the management of what we call Class G airspace, which is airspace from about 700 feet to the ground. And they want to control these things so that so that people aren't flying them around their neighborhoods and people are not flying them uh, around you know, airport traffic and not flying them as a nuisance. And unfortunately, they have taken their great dislike like, and, and, and mistrust with these and they have those more traditional RC aircraft into the same group and so this glider I can I can basically set it anywhere and take it off anywhere 
because I, you start it up and it just goes straight up. These gliders require large open spaces to fly. So, a flight park which is, which is designated for drones, like this one, will not work for gliders. And will not work for a lot of traditional uh, model aviation as well. Um, we need to have the ability to go out into a nice open area and fly. Now another problem with these drones that, that has made them what I consider un unfortunately a little more dangerous than they need to be is because they transmit to a receiver and the receiver basically puts what the camera sees on my phone you can actually get, and people do this all the time, a set of goggles that covers your eyes and has little little viewing screens inside the goggles so everything else is blacked out and what you see from the drone is exactly what the drone sees which is which is what that camera sees now if you look at this the camera faces basically one direction okay so you can see straight ahead but you cannot see behind you you can't see to the right of you you can't see to the left of you you can't see above you you cannot see below you and so with this kind of a drone flying what we call under the hood or, or with the goggles on that limits the view of the, of the surrounding areas, your, all of your peripheral vision, um, you don't know if there is an airplane coming. You can't see it. You might be able to hear it, but you can't see it. You don't know if there is a bird flying. You don't know if somebody is flying a glider or a hang glider or a paraglider. You have no idea <clears throat> what's going on. All you can see is what that camera shows you. And, and um, people will take these little drones and they'll put on the goggles and they'll sit in a community park and they will race these things at very high speeds around the playground equipment. They'll race race them around trees, they'll race them in and out of buildings, they'll race them all over the place, and again, um, it's a, it's a, it's a nu nuisance issue, and, and it can be dangerous. Now please understand, we're not talking life-threatening here, we're just talking dangerous. And, and so therein lies the issue with the drones. This is why the FAA wants to regulate these things and in the process of doing so, they are going to destroy traditional model aviation in the process. And here's what I want from you guys, from all of, all of my YouTube uh, subscribers and foundation friends and everybody. Would you please, there is a website that you can go to. Would you please take a moment, and we only have till uh, March 2nd to do this. Would you take a moment and send an email from the website, it's the, it's the FAA.gov website, uh, send an email to the FAA basically letting them know that um, controlling drones might be one thing, but they should not be controlling traditional model aviation. This will be illegal. My grandchildren will, will not be allowed to fly RC model aviation. My great-grandchildren will, will never be allowed to fly model aviation. Is that really, is that really what our government to do? Is to outlaw something as beautiful and, and something that is so needed. There are many schools all over the country that have STEM programs. Now, STEM programs is basically uh, built around the sciences, built around science and technology. And a lot of the kids doing STEM programs are building RC model just like these and flying them and learning just like I did, learning how to read and understand complex plans, learning how, how mathematics actually really works learning aerodynamics and physics and meteoro meteorology they are learning all of these skills 
illegal. Children will not be allowed to do that ever again, to go out. They can do build little robots and run them indoors and that kind of stuff, but they will not be able to do this. I'm not sure what else we can do, but let the FAA know that first and foremost, drones are not traditional RC model aviation and and drones should be considered in a completely different category than traditional RC model or aviation. These should be just completely exempt from from the, the, the regulations. They have been for 50 years without any kind of a conflict of any kind. And this should not be written by the FAA. Um, to be honest with you, the FAA is the wrong tool. It's kind of like using um, a sledgehammer to tighten a, tighten a loose screw. It's the wrong tool. This should be governed by our local communities and, and, the, and they should be nuisance ordinance passed by our local city councils so, so that in each community, if you do have an issue, the city, the city council can pass an ordinance, just like a leash law, just like uh, noise or ordinance laws for noisy cars or barking ordinances, or there's all sorts of nuisance ordinances. What used to be a what used to be a right is going to be turned into a very, very heavily re regulated privilege. Um, a couple of other things, just really quickly. The FAA is going to require that any unmanned aerial vehicle, drone, traditional radio control, have a have a transmitter in in the device that will actually be able to send a signal to a third party government agency to track everywhere you fly. They will be able to monitor exactly what you're flying, where you're flying, how high you're flying. Uh, they, will, they will know every move that you make and that will be a requirement. They will, they will require a transmitter within the, uh, the drone itself or general aviation that will send out a signal. And in fact, in, in general aviation, we call that a transponder so that air traffic control anywhere in the country along with aircraft uh, equipped with uh, transponders can pick up the signal of your model aircraft uh, to know that if they're flying 20 miles from town at an, you're flying at 20 miles from town at an old dry lake bed uh, and they're at 30,000 feet which you're not going to be flying these more than about you know four or five hundred feet at the most um, that they will know that somebody is flying an unmanned aerial vehicle and 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 you know that might sound good to start with but there's nowhere to put it the technology doesn't even exist I mean let's I mean let's face it look at this where am I going to put another radio system that's strong enough to send out a signal it it, it can't be done not, not not in these And, and if technology gets to the point where they can, I promise you, just like everything else, um, you're looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to make this model um, so, that it, so that it will conform to the, F, to the new FAA regulations that they're trying to impose. The technology that we would need to get my model air, airplane, my traditional radio control um, equipped so that they could be flown. Again, I would only be allowed to fly them in de very, very specific designated areas. And I can promise you there isn't going to be a designated area out um, 15 miles from here, the dry lake bed. That's not going to be designated by the FAA. The FAA isn't going to designate, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of radio control model aviation sites they're going to have like one in Los Angeles or two they're gonna have like one or two in Salt Lake maybe one or, one or so in Las Vegas and I will have to drive in order to, to fly these
hundreds and hundreds of miles. And not only will I have to drive hundreds and hundreds of miles, I will have to stand in line for hours to get my 10 minutes to fly to fly one of my models. It's 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 completely undoable. And so it it will it will be the death uh, of model aviation. And so please give us a, a hand. Go to the FAA website, uh, FAA.org. Um, go to the drone regulations page and uh, and please very very quickly let the FAA know that um, you are not in favor of them regulating traditional model R RC model aviation and and that the, the whole drone thing needs to be thrown out and started over again only this time let's let's do it from a, a, a reasonable perspective okay thanks guys I appreciate your time.